Highways. Today, the U.S.'s national highway system contains well over 150,000 miles of road. They serve as a primary base for transporting people and goods across the country. However, it is easy to forget how difficult travel was less than 100 years ago. Many people take for granted this massive infrastructure, but how did we reach the standard of safe and convenient highways? The Great Depression. It began in 1929 and lasted throughout the 1930s. The stock market crash ruined the economy, unemployment was at a high of over 20%, and many people were going hungry. In 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president, and by 1933, he had begun his New Deal programs. These programs gave a possibility of government aid for state projects, but what could Pennsylvania use it for? In the 1930s, automobile vehicles had become one of the most popular methods of travel, and yet, roads had remained more or less the same. In Pennsylvania, the Appalachian Mountains provided a particularly difficult barrier to cross. There were two main roads connecting the east and west of the state. The long William Penn Highway that traveled partially along the Susquehanna River to avoid most of the steep portions, or the more direct Lincoln Highway, which contained many dangerous curves and slopes over the mountains and passed through many small towns. At the same time, the first German Autobahn Highway had just been completed. America did not want to fall behind in such innovation they needed a better system. A proposal was made by members of the Pennsylvania State Planning Board to build a new super highway that would directly connect Harrisburg to Pittsburgh using the New Deal governmental aid. Unfortunately, tunneling under the mountains would have been too expensive and going straight over the steep sides would have been very difficult to build. Luckily, there was an easier solution. Fifty years prior, the South Pennsylvania Railroad Company had gone bankrupt in the middle of attempting a similar task of connecting the state. Although that rail was never completed, much of the groundwork, including several tunnels through the mountains, had. If the superhighway could use those tunnels, it could reduce the total cost of the project significantly. With a plan to use the abandoned tunnels, Governor George Earle signed a bill to create the new Turnpike Commission in May 1937. The commission applied to two programs from the New Deal, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation and the Public Works Administration. Together, they provided nearly all the funding, with the condition that the entire superhighway of 160 miles be completed by June of 1940. Difficult but possible. Construction began in late October of 1938, leaving them with only 20 months. Two weeks after getting approval, a combined 15,000 people had been given jobs from 155 contractors to work on the turnpike. The census records of 1940 show the various types of people employed by the program funds. These men were civil engineers, roller operators, timekeepers, and other construction laborers. The official route would begin and end in Middlesex, near Carlisle and just west of Harrisburg, all the way to Irwin, just east of Pittsburgh. This highway was not going to be just any road. This would be as smooth and direct as possible. Here's the beginning of a half-mile cut through Clear Ridge, largest highway excavation in the United States. Earth and rocks removed from the cuts are used to fill the valleys to carry the turnpike on grades as gentle as engineering efficiency can make them. Because nothing like this had ever been built on the scale, the commission had to develop specific ways to connect the road as well as new signs to use along it. 
Of the hundreds of structures needing to be built, including ticket booths, rest stops, and bridges, the most challenging were the seven tunnels. While the South Pennsylvania Railroad had lessened the workload, six of the tunnels had to be widened and one had to be completely remade. Widening and completing the old tunnels of the South Penn Railway, abandoned more than 50 years ago. One of these old tunnels was too far gone to be reclaimed, and a completely new tunnel had to be drilled. Here at the right, we can see the opening of the new tunnel, only a few feet from the mouth of the old abandoned tunnel there at the left. All of these tunnels needed to have air ventilation, electric lighting, and general safety standards added. Of the 160 miles, seven were through the mountains. This required extra time, meaning their deadline was impossible, but they continued working. After clearing and setting a flat path, 50 crews of people paved the roads, completing over three miles every day. By the end of September, it seemed like they were ready. After only about 24 months, less than four months past their original deadline, the Turnpike Commission had achieved something incredible. One minute past midnight on the 1st of October, 1940, the new Pennsylvania Turnpike was officially open. The way it goes, Pennsylvania Turnpike, I love you so. After one week, nearly 30,000 vehicles had traveled on the road, and nearly two and a half million in the first year. With a low fee of one cent per mile, the superhighway became an attraction of sorts. When it first opened, there were no speed limits, and many people went upwards of 80 to 90 miles an hour. This reduced the driving time from Harrisburg to Pittsburgh from about six hours to about three. In all respects, the Turnpike was an immediate success. Its popularity only continued to grow, and within 20 years of its opening, an additional 300 miles were added to the Turnpike extending it to the Ohio and New Jersey borders, as well as the northeastern part of Pennsylvania near Scranton. Because this was the first superhighway in America, it became the standard for other states to follow. At a time when African Americans faced extreme discrimination while traveling, the Pennsylvania Turnpike offered a safer means of driving between Green Book approved lodgings in cities like Harrisburg and Pittsburgh. Long distance travel was now possible for all families across the state, white or black, young or old, wealthy or working class. In 1956, 16 years after the completion of the Turnpike, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed into law the Federal Aid Highway Act, authorizing 41,000 miles of interstate highway construction across the country. The Pennsylvania Turnpike changed what it meant to travel by car, and in doing so, connected the people of Pennsylvania through the mountains.